Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mining Chamber video. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to use NB Miner. We're going to first go through a quick setup so you guys can get going right away. And then we're going to get into more details and how you should download it and all that information that you need to know. So now let's go ahead and get into the video right after the intro. First, we're going to start off with the overview on NB Miner. If you guys want to jump to a specific point of this video, feel free to look in the descriptions below. Everything will be timestamped below. So NB Miner is a cryptocurrency miner that can be running on Windows or a Linux based mining operating system if they support it. So the coins that you can mine with NB Miner are all these coins that are mentioned right here or in general any coin that follows these algorithms that are showing on this table. So there's a vast majority of the popular coins that you can mine here including Ethereum, Ravencoin and then Coinflux as well. You can also mine Ethereum Classic and multiple other coins in these algorithms here. So as for the developer fee, the fees on this miner you'll be paying 1% if you're mining Ethereum or Ethereum Classic. So anything on ETHash or ETC hash will take from you 1%. And then for Ravencoin you guys can see here on Kapow you'll be paying 2% and on Octopus which is Coinflux you'll be paying 3%. You also have the other algorithms in here with their percentage as well. So just keep that in mind when you're using this miner. Now NB Miner supports the vast majority of the GPUs so usually you won't have any troubles trying to use it on newer hardware or older hardware but you can come back here and double check so this will all be in the readme section of the nb miner i will leave the links for all this in the descriptions below so here you guys can see different algorithms as well as the coins and then the compute compatibility so this applies to nvidia cards although i was not able to find amd cards compatibility so to look at these compute compatibility you just want to look for the number here and then you can go to this compute compatibility reference link and then from there you guys will find the number and then with the GPUs that are included in that number. So for example for the RTX 3000 series they are on the 8.6 so if we go back here you'll see that 8.6 is supported on almost all the algorithms. Now as for the VRAM I don't think this is updated since in Ethereum now you do need more than 4 GB to mine Ethereum so just follow the VRAM information based on the DAG size of the coin that you're trying to mine. Now to download this miner you want to go to releases and then from releases you can download the latest one so you guys can see here there's different versions and then if you go lower you'll find the older versions with all the fixes they added so in the time of this video the latest one is 36.1 so you guys can download the most recent version if it's different than this one now if you scroll down a little bit you will find here the assets for this miner and then you have here the linux installation as well as the windows installation and then where it says dot shot 256 that is the checksums for the miner so we will compare those later on after we install the miner and then you have all the source code in here as well so it's an open source miner which gives it credibility and it makes it secure for yourself to use it for mining so now since we're on windows and we're going to test it on windows i'm going to install this nb miner 36.1 winzip if you're on hive os or any mining specific operating system you won't have to do anything you'll just find it in the list of miners and you can use it directly from there so to download it just click on the zip file and then you can save it anywhere you want but just remember that your antivirus might flag it as a virus and then you'll just have to whitelist it from your antivirus. Now what I did is I just have a folder named miners in my desktop and then that folder I have it whitelisted from Windows Defender so that every time I install a miner in there it doesn't delete it for me right away thinking it's a virus. It's all just false flags so don't worry about them at all. Now if you have no idea how to do that I have a video on mining on your PC and then I go into it with details in that video. I will leave the link for that video in the descriptions below. So now let's go ahead and save it here and then after we save it here you guys can see on the bottom left I got a dangerous so brave has blocked it now this is normal like i said it's just a false flag and all you need to do is you want to click on show all and then on show all you want to go ahead and hit on keep dangerous file so after that you will see that it finished installing and then you can do show in folder and then you'll be able to find the miner in your folder so now the first thing you want to do before extracting your miner you want to make sure it's an authentic version of nb miner like we've seen recently with the news that phoenix miner was recently compromised so please make sure to do 
this step just to make sure that you have an authentic version of the miner and it matches the checksums which is like a fingerprint for the folder of the miner. To do that all you will need to do is go ahead and open up the command prompt so open up a cmd and then from there you can go ahead and navigate to the miners folder. So if you have no idea how to navigate in command prompt you can look it up it's not really that complicated. I will give you a simple explanation here. So you just want to do cd to change directory and then from there you want to go to wherever this miner is. So now I'm currently in my so canon user and then in that user I have downloads documents and all these folders right here. So I want to go to desktop so I would say cd desktop and then from there I can just hit enter and that will put me in the desktop folder. So now after the desktop folder I have my miners folder. So now I need to go to cd and then miners and after that I am in the folder where I have nb miner installed. So I can go ahead and type out dir, which will show all the stuff that's in this folder. So here I have nbminer 36.1 win.zip. So now I want to make sure that this is authentic through the checksums. And to do that, all you need to do is type out cert util and then dash hash file. And then you want to put the name of that folder. So what you can do is just type out nb and then hit tab. It should automatically fill it out for you. Just make sure that it's the zip. And then after the zip, you want to go ahead and say the algorithm. So you want to say SHA-256. And the reason that we're saying SHA-256 is because here at NB Minor they have the SHA-256-1. So we can go ahead and hit enter and then you guys will see here there's a long string that comes out and that string will be in this file right here. So I'm going to install this file as well now and then I can go ahead and save this to the same folder. And now after you save it you just want to go ahead and do open with and then select notepad and open this file with notepad. So now once you have that open you will see here a string and then the matching zip file. So if we go back to our command prompt we can compare them and then they are matching exactly the same. So that means that the nb minor that we have is authentic and we're good to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete this SHA-256 file and then I'm going to extract NB miner within my miners folder. And now here we have the extracted folder. So usually what I like to do when I install any miner, I don't like to have to click on two different folders to reach the items. So what I will do is I will just drag all these files in here back to the other folder, the first folder. And then like that, I can go ahead and delete the second folder. So now once I open up NB miner 36.1, I don't have to open up two different folders to reach the files for the miner. So that's for the installation of the miner and now you're all set and you have that miner installed on your system securely without any issues or anything you need to worry about. So now the first thing I want to go over after installing the miner is showing you guys a quick start to get going right away without any extra information. And then after that we're jumping into details with this miner and talking about different commands that can help you out later on. So let's go ahead and get started with the quick start. So the first thing you're going to see when you download your folder for NB Miner, you will see all these different files right here. So all these are different batch files and they all say start and then the coin. So here you have start EDC, start ETH and they all follow a simple principle. So all you need to do is just go ahead, right click on it and then do edit. And then you might get this pop up right here. Just do on more info and then run anyways. And then after that, you will see some information like this. Now, when you're here, all you need to do is change the address here for your own wallet address now if you don't know how to get a wallet address you guys can come to miningchamber.com slash platforms and then here you will find some wallets that i do like and i use so you guys can download any of those and then get your ethereum address from there so since this is for start eth then you will be putting your ethereum address here and then you're also going to be changing the pool based on what works best for you so there's multiple different pools out there you guys can use ethermine it's a good choice and then just put the server that's close to you and the port number and then you're all set after that, you just close this file, make sure that you save it first, and then you run that file. You don't need to run it as an administrator because you're not doing any overclocks there. So you can just double left click on it and then it will start kicking in and start mining for you. So that also applies for all these other ones. So if you go for Ravencoin, for example, if you have a four gigabyte card, you just go ahead and hit edit and then same thing, run anyways. And after that, change the Raven address and then the Raven pool. And that's all you need to do to get started super quickly. Now, if you want to learn more about the different commands, please stick around and then we're going to go into details on all these commands so that you can learn how to use these miners efficiently. So now that we covered the quick start, let's go ahead and jump into details with the commands. So there is a huge list of commands but we're not going to go over all of them i'm just going to pick the ones that i think are very important to know so the first one i want to start off with is dash a and that's the first command in your script so dash a or dash dash algo and what that does is selects your mining algorithm 
So if you're mining Ethereum, you would do dash A, ETH, and then that would be the Ethereum algorithm. So ETH, and if you're mining Ravencoin or anything like that, you would select the specific algorithm that that coin runs on. So it's a fairly simple command and you guys will be able to find all the algorithms that supports it in the requirements list here. And then one other command that goes hand by hand with this one is, for example, let's say ETH when Ethereum Classic used to also be on ETH and now it has its own algorithm, which is ETC hash. So back then when there was Ethereum and Ethereum Classic running on the same algorithm, you would have to use the command dash dash coin. So dash dash coin would set a coin for ETH algo, whether it's ETH or ETC. So if you wanted to mine Ethereum Classic, you would do dash dash coin ETC and the default is Ethereum. But now since Ethereum Classic is not in ETH anymore, you guys don't need to worry about this command if you're trying to mine Ethereum Classic. All you need to do is just change that algorithm to ETC hash. Now they don't mention ETC hash here in the algorithms, but you guys can give it a try and see if it works out for you. Now if using the ETC hash method doesn't work, you can try doing ETH and then dash dash coin and Ethereum Classic. So after dash A and dash dash coin, the next important command to know is dash o or dash dash url. So what that does is basically specifies your mining pool URL. You guys can select any mining pool you want. I have a full video on mining pools. So if you have no idea how mining pools work, feel free to check out that video. The link will be in the descriptions below. And with the dash O, there's also dash O1 or dash O2. And what that does is you specify a backup mining pool. So if mining pool number one goes down, mining pool number two will kick in and then etc. The maximum that you can specify is three pools. So you have dash O, and and then dash o1 and dash o2 so after the mining pools you have your user and your user is your wallet address so here you see dash u or dash dash user and this is usually your wallet address now in some scenarios you would make a username and password with your mining pool and in that case you can use your username and password but most of the time all you need to do is just put your wallet address if you don't have a username and password with the mining pool that you're trying to mine to and this also goes back to u1 and u2 so you can have backup users for your backup backup pools. Now the next important command would be dash D or dash dash devices and what that does is basically you specify the GPUs that you want to use for mining. So let's say you have two GPUs in your mining rig, you can do dash D0 and then that would select only the first GPU that's on your mining rig. That also goes with your main PC. So if you're trying to mine with just one GPU, you can do dash D0 and then you would select the first GPU or you can do dash D1 and that would select the second GPU. Now note that it starts from zero so the counting would start 0, 1, 2, 3 and that would be for the first 4 GPUs. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to disable one of your GPUs. Just like the devices command there is also the dash dash platform command and what that does is it chooses for your platform so whether it's Nvidia or AMD. Now the default is both of them but you can do one to choose Nvidia cards only and you can do number two to choose AMD cards only. Meaning that if you do one you'll only be mining with your Nvidia cards and if you do two you'll only be mining with your AMD cards and then there's also the dash dash fee command and then this command basically changes the percentage of your fee for the miner so you can set it to zero to turn off your dev fee or you can keep it the way it is and not change anything the only thing about this is if you do set it to zero it reduces your performance now I'm not sure exactly what comes out to be more profitable either turning off the dev fee or lowering your performance but honestly I would say just keep it on and then use it the way it is if you want to give it a test and turn off your dev fee then feel free to do that and another really useful command is temperature limit temperature limit sets a limit for your gpu in celsius and if that exceeds it will stop the gpu for 10 seconds so that means if your card is overheating it will stop mining for 10 seconds so it cools down a little bit and then it will kick back in and now the last command i want to cover is dash dash mt or dash dash memory tweak so what that does is basically modifies your NVIDIA card's memory, specifically the 1080 and 1080 Ti. So before with the 1080s and 1080 Ti's, you have to run the pill before running the miner, which would increase your hash rate up to 40 or 45 mega hash. But now you can do it through this command instead. 
So this command ranges from one to six. So that means you can do dash dash MT and then one or dash dash MT two and keep going until six. So you can try all of these numbers and see which one works best for your GPU. The one that gives you the highest hash rate will be the better one for your GPU. Now that is it for the commands for NB minor. We covered the most important ones that I think you guys should know. If you guys have any other commands that you think people should know, please leave it in the comments below. And then from there, everybody can read it and learn from it. So now that we covered the commands, let me tell you guys a couple of things that you can do with this miner as well. So first, you can monitor your rig through the web monitor using your port number. And if you are a developer, you can also use this to build on it applications. Now, I'm not going to get into this in this video, but this is just something that you can keep in mind or go more into details with it if you are more technical. And there are also the config files that you can run, which will save your settings. And then from there, you can open it in a different computer. That's also a good choice to do, but with how simple the bat files are in NB minor, you don't really need to worry about that as well. So now before I wrap up the video, let me give you guys my conclusion on NB minor. I think it's a pretty good minor. It does come at a 1% fee for ethash, which is a bit high. So Comparing to Phoenix Miner, which has 0.65% fee, it is considered a bit higher. But all around, NB Miner is not a bad choice at all if you're looking for a simple and a fast mining software for AMD and NVIDIA together. Now, one of the things I wish NB Miner had is being able to overclock through the command line arguments. That would be pretty nice, so you can just put your overclocks in NB Miner and then it will automatically apply them as soon as you run the miner. We can do that in Phoenix Miner, but not in NB Miner. So hopefully eventually they will apply it to here. That is unless I missed it and I didn't figure out how to do it. So if you guys know a way to apply your overclocks with NB minor, please let me know in the comments below. Now that wraps up the video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If, if you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments below. Now the next mining softwares I'm going to be covering are Team Red Miner as well as T-Rex Miner. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified when these come out and drop a like on this video if you guys enjoyed it. Thank you again and I hope you have a wonderful day.